Welcome to Haxby Shed. I need to do some servicing work on this Elliott 10M shaper. I did a bit when it first arrived. The pulley was loose, the table wasn't square. I sorted those things out, but there's probably four or five jobs I really need to do now. I'd much rather be working on projects than working on my machines, but if I don't allocate time, they'll never get done. So, the bearings need changing in the motor. They growl and grumble all the time. This head here doesn't swivel freely. I can get it over to 45, but only if I smack it with a rubber mallet. Um, there's a part broken off the bull gear stroke slide, so it only has a stroke of nine inches rather than 10. Um, I want to put some proper oilers in here. These ball oilers, they're difficult to use. I'm not sure how much really goes in there. The ways here at the front are quite polished and they need scraping a bit just to uh, get them to hold a bit of oil so you know add all those up and it's quite a bit of work oh yes the bottom pivot pin needs checking as well because the shaper clunks a bit anyway let's get on with it i hope you find it useful getting the ram off is easy enough just undo the big nut here let the link drop inside i brought the arm to the center position with the pivot at the top so i know where that is four screws to come out of here take this strip off and then this ram will slide across and should just lift straight off then it's quite heavy so i'll try not to fall over things You can see at this end how the ways are still scraped but this end they've become polished so I'll just give them a bit of a scrape. This top knuckle seems to be fine. I had a problem with this I made a modification because there's an oiling hole there and a little reservoir and I found I could fill that with oil but no oil would run in so I actually made a small cross cut on the bottom of this eye here and that helps. I mean, it's been like that for, gosh, 1960s, this, I think, for a long time. But I just thought that was an improvement. There's virtually no slop on that nut, the adjustment nut, the stroke adjustment nut. That's pretty good. And the pin's probably all right. But I will get this out and I will check it. Then if I'm going to repair this bull gear stroke slide, I may have to take that bull gear off. I'm not quite sure how to do it. I thought there would be some screws on this side, but no. So I may have to decide whether to do that or not. Well, just checking in the manual, to get the bull gear off, you've got to take this bearing off, which means taking this off, which is easy enough, this casing off, and then the whole bearing. This has to come off, which is pinned on to the shaft. And then there's four bolts hold the bearing, so that has to come off. And then you can get to the four bolts that are on this side of the bull gear. So it's quite a job. So I think we'll do the motor first. We'll get this arm off as well. And then we'll keep that bull gear under review. See if I think it's worth it just for the extra inch of stroke. This is the sliding block. That all looks great. This is the pivot pin. This pin slides in a T-slot and there's a Allen grub screw that stops it coming out so you take the grub screw out then you can slide this pin to the bottom of the channel take it out when you've done that this should just come out well the pivot pin is 1.25 inches and there really is no wear that I can detect on it it measures the same in both planes you know up and down side to side so that's really good news this is where the bull gear is broken on that slot so it's on this side and you can see I'd put a piece of white plastic in sort of t-shaped and then siliconed that in so that the pivot pin couldn't go too high up and then come off the T so it's been like that for you know most of the time I've had it but the thing was I was cleaning it out and I actually found the broken piece down in the bottom piece of cast iron of course mm, not really sure what I can do with it but it would be good to get the full 10 inches of stroke on this like I said we'll keep it under review 
This is the piece that I found in the bottom, the piece that snapped off. So you can't obstruct that face, that face, or this bit of this face. I could try and weld it, but really I don't want to, because if I try bronze welding it and then I crack the bull gear or something like that, that's going to be the end of the shaper. I've seen it where people have machined away the side of the T-slot and made a whole new piece for the side of it. I don't know if I'm up for all of that work. I'll think about it. Time to get that pulley off. I think I said I made a kind of top hat for it. The thing was so loose when I got the shaper it was wiggling off all the time and you can see those witness marks there in the case. I did use um, Loctite on it, but it was the Loctite that you can remove, hopefully. I may have to heat it up, don't know. So we'll try. Well, now that I get to it, I find that the motor bearings are pretty quiet. Listen to this. And if I put my lapel mic next to the motor, And I put a screwdriver to my ear and listened and there's very little grum grumbling. It's just not worth the effort to change those. So I need to look for a noisy bit somewhere else. The bearing on the big pulley is slightly noisy. But there's no wobble on it. And the belt itself is noisy so maybe I just have to put up with that. But I do need to look for some clanking somewhere. Well, I was beginning to wonder if I was wasting my time completely, but I found the clanking problem. Look at that gear. It's doing this on the shaft. And when it comes to this side, it's catching on part of the gear that's behind it. I'll try and zoom in. Right, watch that, see if it'll stay focused. Start it up. There's the problem. And watch this. Hang on, I'll turn it off at the wall first. Right, if I can get in here, and if you can still see. And when it's right back this side, it'll catch. There's a shoulder on that gear behind. Uh, it's hard to do with like that, but I try. Can you hear it? Because the teeth are catching a shoulder on the gear behind. In fact, I can see how it's been chewing away at that a little bit. It's not much damage, but I can see it. So that gear needs to be sorted out. And maybe we need to put a bronze bush or something at this side here. Well, looking at the manual, I can see that that grub screw locks this gear to the shaft so the gear spins and the shaft spins with it so to get that shaft out and the gear out i need to take the panel off on the right hand side i've taken the actuating lever off and i've taken the knob off here for the speed change so five screws four longs one shorter that's the shorter one the others are the same size as each other they're the long ones. Now before you start unscrewing these, you need to take the clutch off. Pull the lever this way, otherwise you'll get heavy forces on this as you're trying to unscrew it. Now then, I think it's now only held by paint. Actually you can use the clutch to push it off with. Here we go. Right, what have I got? It's quite heavy. This is the big bearing bush for the bull gear. That's the shaft. That's going backwards and forwards, clanking away. I thought I was going to be stuck getting this shaft out. I thought I might have had to take the big pulley off and push it from the other side. But by wiggling this, I can extract it.
I've nearly dropped it inside. Okay, well you can't get that wrong because it's longer at one end than the other. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now then. Oh. Oh dear. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bit of a struggle to get this out. I don't know how to do it yet. Won't come through the door. <laughs> Won't come through the top. Ah. Oh. Probably uh, went in there before the bull gear went in. Never mind, it doesn't have to come out. I can do the job without. Sorry, I'm not giving you a very good view, am I? I'm in here, trying to get this out. Well, I have a couple of options here. This is brass. I could machine this. But actually, I've got this bronze washer. I guess it's bronze. Came out of the Rapido. So the OD is just fine. And the ID, I'll just take that out to one inch. And that'll do. At the back of the machine, there's a plate with four oilers on. And those oilers feed these bushes down in the gearbox here. And I wanted to be sure the oil was passing to the bearings on this shaft that I've got out there. And I put this piece of welding wire down there. I couldn't get it through. But I shone a bit of light down and looked down and I found that there is enough of a passageway, even though it's not a full hole. And I squirted some oil in and it came out. So I'm happy with that. Well, here goes. This is my washer, my spacer. I think it is bronze. What's the chances of me getting this in place and not dropping it into the bottom? Well, folks, here's the plan. I've got the washer on a piece of welding wire. If I can get the washer in place, I just pull the welding wire, it'll unravel and release the washer. Wish me luck with that. It took some patience, but I got it. So let's see if I can get the wire out now. Yay! Look at that. And see how much slop we've got. Just a little. That'll do. I'm pleased with that. Proper repair. So let's run it. Top speed. Happy with that. There's a bit of a squeaking noise. I think that must be the belt. Not sure. Yeah, good. Well, buoyed up with that bit of success on the idler, I've decided to take the bull gear off. So this is only held on with this pin. I gave it a tap, it dropped out. I have already centre popped this. There's a pop there, so I know that's where the fat end of the pin is. And I can also get this onto the shaft the same way as well, because I've popped inside the shaft. So we keep the timing the same. So this comes off, this comes off, and then I think you can get through to the four screws that holds the bull gear onto the shaft. That's the plan. What I'd also like to do is to incorporate some kind of wheel on this, although I haven't got the wheel at the moment, to turn this by hand from this side, because at the moment I can only turn it from the pulley side and it's a complete pain in the what's it. You know, having to walk around the machine all the time and pull the pulley cover off to advance the machine. You know, I had this puller for years and hardly ever used it and now I seem to use it all the time. Uh, there's not quite enough space here, but it's coming. Oh, okay, I've reached the limit of the bush that I put in the center. The spacer, oh, there you go. Just four screws. I'm not sure what to do with this when I get this off. I'm holding the bull wheel up. All the screws are the same length by the look of it. Yeah. Slip the bearing off. Try not to drop anything. Ooh, ah. That's all in good condition. Right, what have we got? Oh, okay. 
I see. Four big cap head Allen sockets. Hmm. Well, that's next. Get those out and then lift it from the top. Well, I got the screws out. One was shorter. That's the short one. There are actually some indexing marks they've put on, so I can follow those. So we're going to have to tap this shaft out from the back, from inside, and try to stop the bull gear falling down or this shaft coming out onto the floor. But there is a hole clearance through, so I can tap it from the other side. Well, it's out. I managed not to drop it inside. There is an indexing mark there, yeah, which I suspect lines up with whatever the bottom was. There, that's it. Oh yes, and that's where the short screw goes, that one, because, oh, I can't even pick this up, because, because there's that which stops this sliding T nut here from falling out of the bottom. Mm. Okay, yuck, it's a mucky job this.